We're going to make a wiggly chain, one millimeter round wire, and a four and a half millimeter mandrel. This is going to take about 1.2 meters of wire. Cut it, cut the wire in 300 mil long pieces, 30 centimeters. Use your cordless drill to make the jump rings. Just stick the wire straight in the chuck, bend it 90 degrees. Keep the wire right next tight against the coil. When you get to within 25 mil of the end, stop. Otherwise, this is going to flip through your fingers and cut you. Take it out. And what I do is I clip these little tag ends off to make it more manageable. Just use your side cutters. Now we're going to cut these jump rings. And it's going to take three or four of these sets of jump rings, these coils, to make the chain. So you can just hold this on the end of your mandrel if you want and saw it. Uh, you can hold it between your fingers and saw it. You can hold it against your bench peg and saw it. However you want to do it, whatever works for you. Uh, one coil at a time and you're just going to saw at about a 45 degree angle. So you can see that I'm just sawing one at a time. If you try to cut the whole thing, it'll just make a real ugly groove and you won't be able to uh, have a pretty chain. So saw all of these off. Put them on your bench plate. Now to assemble this chain we're going to use two sets of parallel jaw pliers. And we're just going to hold the jump ring, push it past itself, bring it back so that it just clears so that you have this nice tight join. We want these two ends to touch and we want them to be lined up. So when you get the first one closed, when you get the first one closed, take a second one that's open. If it's not open enough, open it up and you twist these sideways, not end to end, but sideways to open it or close it. Take that jump ring, put it on the open one, close that. Now this is your beginning. You've got two jump rings that are intertwined. Now we're going to take another open one and put those two on the one. Close this. Now we're going to take another open one and go through again. So we go through both of them again and then through the one that we looped on. So that when we close this one we'll have two doubles that are joined. So you'll have two rings that are intertwined. As soon as I get this around I'll show you. So we have two rings that are intertwined going through another two rings that are intertwined. Now at this point we take another open one and we just put it through two of the end ones that are intertwined. 
close that jump ring and then put another one through both this one and the two that are intertwined. Close that. And that's your beginning. And just continue until you have all of your rings assembled. Um, when we get it all assembled, what we'll do is we'll hold this on the third hand and solder these joins one at a time. You can see now that it's just two and two and two. And each one of these two are intertwined. And then these two are intertwined with the other two. Very simple. You can see that I've got my third hand holding this jump ring as far away from the join as possible. So what we'll do now is we'll just put a small amount of flux on the join. Cut solder chips on your charcoal block and spread them out. Then light your torch. Gas first. Light the flame. About 100 mil long. Oxygen until the orange goes out. And you shouldn't hear a very loud hiss. This is actually a fairly big flame. Separate your solder bits. Put your solder pick on the back side, heat the pick in the solder, the solder will jump onto the pick, and then you can position it up here on your jump ring. I'll zoom in. So you can see that the little ball of solder is sitting right on the end of the solder pick. So we always aim the flame so that it only touches the jump ring that we want to solder. Heat this up, the flux will go clear. At that point, you position your pick with the solder on, keeping the flame on both. The solder will flow. Take your pick away. Take your tweezers. Grab the next jump ring. Turn loose and position this ring once again as far away on the third hand from the connection as possible. And ideally, none of these jump rings down here will have solder on them touching the ones below. But saying that, if you position your torch correctly, you'll never solder those together. So heat the pick and the solder. Heat the jump ring until the flux goes clear. Position your solder. It'll flow. Use your tweezers and put the next one up. Now, continue to the end. Don't pickle this until you're finished because if you do happen to miss soldering a jump ring, you'll be able to see it because it'll be the only one that isn't oxidized. So as you solder these, you'll have a clear spot where your flux is and where it's still protecting the metal, because that's what it's for. And all of the rest of them will be just a nice silver color. So just one at a time, position these up in your third hand. Jiggle it around so that all of the other jump rings are down, so that you have a nice gap between them and the one you want to solder. Flex it. Heat your solder with your solder on the solder pick. Uh, heat this. Flex goes clear. Position your pick. It'll flow. Take, take this away. Put the next jump ring up. So just continue to the end. Now if you're soldering away, you position your jump ring and you can see that it's not lined up very well. See how that isn't lined up? Well, stop at this point. 
line that up because if you don't, you're going to have an ugly link in your chain. So just take the time, make sure all of these are lined up nice and straight. When you get to the last one, put a single jump ring in the last two. And then on the other end of the chain, if it's the right length, put a single jump ring and a hook. Solder the single jump ring, solder the single jump ring on the hook, and then pickle it. Then go back through and look at every solder join. Don't, not just a quick scan, actually look at each solder join. If they're good, tumble it and you're finished. If you find any joints that aren't good, go back and solder them. That's it.